Yep. I imagine that would be more or less it, other than a lot of ambling, pleasant conversation, because mm-hmm. we're a sorry. Yep, of course. Uh, and that was also you and I kind of summing up what would have been a drawn-out, longer conversation, because a sorry don't need to speak quickly. So, yeah. um, there you go. And you guys uh, enjoy uh, time together. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, kind of like, you know, old stories, or whatever the case may be. Uh, questioning about the sorry home world, and uh, whether or yeah. not, like, a, a certain political... Well, I don't even know happen. much about the home world. So. Sadly. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so pushing on from there. Uh, we also want to have a conversation with Crax, looking to speak to his uncle. Crax. So this would happen even weeks after the one with uh, Andre. Um, mm-hmm. So Crax, when you speak with your uncle, he reaches back out to you, said I'll be there in like a month or so. And so it's it's literally, you get a, uh, a message from him saying, there. Yep, Crax like, gets that message, picks up his things leaves the ship or whatever he was doing mm-hmm. yep. um and yeah he goes to meet his uncle yep. you know like what ship he uh is on and so you can just look at kind of like one of those check the ship the, to check the manifest or whatever that to see yeah where he's docked and you go over to his ship so when you go to check out his ship he actually has uh the ship that he's a part of is much larger he's actually uh part of a um uh, a bulk freighter is uh no not a bulk freighter sorry a uh, fleet cruiser is the size of the ship that he is uh, that he is on. Um, it is a, uh, a Krogan vessel. Um, Krogan vessels are, are kind of funny because again, Krogan never developed space flight in the sense that um, like the, the other races did. Like humans found it on Mars, and so the Asari found it uh, with the ancient artifact hidden inside of their home world, etc., etc., etc. Um, Krogan were uplifted which means that um, all of the original designs were made by, literally were handed to them by the uh, Solarians. And so all their initial designs were very Solarian. And then they've kind of like jury rigged it over. Um, Krogan designed vessels tend to be very heavy, very slow. Um, They can take lots of fire, but deliver out tons more. The fact that they're slow doesn't matter because a Krogan vessel has the ability to, um, uh, to hit weapons, sorry, to hit other vessels from extremely long ranges but that are just ex- entirely unforgiving at short ranges. Um, they will annihilate anything at short ranges. All right, so moving on. He's uh, part of this uh, this large vessel, and uh, you're going to speak with him. You're actually welcome aboard the ship. Nobody's worried about a single person coming on the ship. You know, another Krogan. Yep. So uh, when you come onto the ship, uh, he will, you know, kind of like, he knows that you're coming. He'll actually meet you over by the airlock. Um, the greatest thing about stepping onto the ship is the smell and the taste. So much like we described before, um, this actually has a, uh, an atmosphere that's similar to that of, um, of Tchunga. So it actually feels like Krogan air to breathe. Now the funny thing about uh, Tchunga um, and their atmosphere is, um, so Krogan and what they prefer for atmospheres, most Krogan don't live on Tchunga, right? They actually, most of them live all over the place. However, this is designed to be like, you know, like this is our home, this is what we can handle. And as a matter of fact, Frank, um, as your suit might pick up and let you know, there is even a slight radiation leak inside the actual vessel itself. It's small enough yeah, that like <laughs> it's small enough that like quarians, uh, uh, Torians, and stuff like that um, would be perfectly fine with it. Probably even outside of their suits. But um, but you know, like long term exposure to Solarians and humans and whatnot might not be a good thing. Um, so you walk onto the vessel and it feels warm. And it smells right. And so uh, he comes up to you and he's like, Nephew. Uncle. And, you know, he goes to clasp arms or however Krogan shake hands. Imagine it's like you know, the clasp arm, kind of like a headbutt sort of a thing. You know what I mean? Nothing oh, no, that's... headbutts are insulting. <laughs> Nothing that's too 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 aggressive, right? So anyways, you, uh, you know, and um, uh, he's like, you wanted to speak? Preferably in private, but he kind of looks around the ship. He and he'll just lo- he, shrugs. Yep, he looks over your weapons and he's like, uh, he looks over your weapons. He's like, follow me, and he'll turn and he'll walk over into their armory. Now, their armory on the ship is about the size of your uh, whole um, hull, right? Like where your storage area. So you walk in and there's like weapons on the walls. There are like these huge 
we're gonna call them like Gatling guns that are, are they're just huge, they're massive. No way can a regular human that's not like been uh, genetically <clears throat> engineered and psionically, uh, c cybernetically enhanced can carry one of these things. But you know, this is like a classic Krogan weapon to like be like a slow, heavy artillery kind of Krogan would walk around with this thing and like shoot stuff. There's weapons everywhere, but more importantly, the workbenches in here are incredible. Krogans aren't very nimble, right? They're just not, they're not very nimble. Um, but the weapons that they use are extremely advanced. Luckily, their technology came from Solarian make. So literally, you put your weapon on a table, and you press a button, and the table starts taking apart your weapon for you and cleaning it for you and everything. All Solarian technology. So you literally, you put your weapons on the table, you press a button, and it starts taking them apart and cleaning them out and doing all sorts of different things. Um, now, the thing is, like, your weapons are actually in really good shape because Winnie takes care of them. And uh, Winnie is really meticulous as a person. Um, however, uh, she doesn't take care of them the same way a Krogan would, which is, again, the way that a Solarian would. So, um, while that's happening, because it takes an extended period of time, it's like put on a wash cycle, he turns to you and he's like, you wanted to talk? I have some interesting information. And he pulls out one of the data pads. Mm-hmm. What's and this? he, you know, activates it, turns it on. It's all the information he downloaded from the ship. From your own ship? The Solarian ship. Oh, from the Solarian ship. I specifically said, Cracks would take that data. Uh-huh. So he takes it and he looks it over. And he's, uh, he's uh, kind of like leafing through it uh, quickly. Now, your uncle is uh, a few centuries old. You yeah. know what I mean? So he's not young by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so, you know, when was... Quick Google search for me, because I honestly forgot off the top of my head. What year was the... Uh, uh, 710. 710? As in, I mean, 710, I think. Was, Had it open earlier. Yep, 700. Genophage. Yeah, Genophage, cool. So he was alive during Genophage. He was alive during this. So he's leafing through this. He remembers this, uh, this name because the person was a huge war hero. And he's like, I know this asshole. He was a thorn in Krogan's side. Mm. They gave him all sorts of honors he didn't deserve. He never once killed his own people. He's an idiot. And so he's kind of like reading through. Um, now, mind you, he wasn't like a part of this battle. He's just kind of like spouting yeah, off. Yeah, he was just. Um, and so he's reading through. And then we kind of like sees like, not like the bad implications, but like the really good implications. He kind of, you know, he's reading it. And he, you can see that like, it's quiet and he's like really reading it. Krogan aren't the brightest people, so it takes him a little bit of time to get through it, which I'm sure seems normal to, to cracks. Uh, and so he eventually uh, gets to the bottom, and he looks at you, and he's like, this could be damaging. And you just get this toothy grin from uh, from cracks. Just looks like we have some leverage over uh, the Solarium League, or Union, whatever the fuck they're called. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, but these are Solarians. So, the Krogan way, you point, you <laughs> shoot, you win. The Solarians are different. They have to talk and use paper. They're different. The only way to make this as damaging as, uh, as we want, the only way to, to maybe start a war, is to give this to the right Solarians. Hmm. And... Cracks just nods. It's like, I wouldn't mind another war with them. I missed the first. You travel with a Solarian, right? He's too clever for his own good. And you know what they say. Clever Baron steps in the trap. <laughs> he's, he, he, you know, he's laughing, and he actually, as he's laughing, kind of like mindlessly looks off to the side. We literally see a Varen trap on the wall. <laughs> um, so, anyways, he, uh, uh, after like he chuckles or whatever, he goes, <clears throat> "The Solarian. Any chance you can get him to visit his home world?" Cracks. Thanks for a moment. Kind of shakes his head. Not without a reason. He's cautious. Almost cowardly. Kills unarmed. Hmm. Sounds like a Solarian, all right. 
build up a people, make them your weapons, and then when you're done with them, throw them inside the garbage, along with all of their babies. Sounds like a Solarian, all right. I don't know how it is you can stand to be with one for so long. How have you not killed it yet? Oh, that's right. Crow can only kill when the kill is honorable. There's no honor in killing a Solarian, even if he does have a pistol in his hands. It's more like stomping on a newborn quarian. The only give that it has is the suit, and then it goes crunch. And Crax just looks and says, he's not worth killing. Not yet. We'll see. You don't want to go there yet anyway. It's going to take time. Got to go fishing. Cast a line. And see which quarry, which Solarian nibbles. We'll uh, we'll hook him and and pull him in to to see which of them wants this information. They salivate all over those squealy bastards. And Crax we'll... just nods because you know respect elders. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. He's like, we'll find the Solarian that can that can do the most, the one that can help us start this war. We'll find the right one. In that time, I'll give you a reason. A reason to... To get him to go to his home world. Give the information to the right people. And then we can finally bring hell down on them. We can finally rain the skies on their slimy asses. We can have their sea just as polluted as our air. It would be a glorious time for the Krogan. Cracks nods and just looks over at the wall towards the guns mm -hmm. and just smiles. As long as we're armed, the war will never end. I agree with you. You did good, nephew. You did good here. You didn't fuck up like your brother. And he, he gestures over at the same wall that you're looking at and he says, Go on. Reward yourself. Oh, he takes one of the big fucking Gatling guns. <laughs> Frank's like, you described it! You shouldn't have described it! <laughs> Heavy artillery? Absolutely! Hog <laughs> takes it off and... Oh, and Hulkbuster armor? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's funny, too, because they literally only have three of them on the walls. And so you're like, I was like, what are these? And he looks at you holding it, and he's like regarding it for a moment. And then he nods and he's like, looks good on you. <clears throat> He's like, uh, sorry, looks good on you. Honestly, I think you hold it better than my son did. He nods and like he's strapping it on, just like making sure it's, you know, he looks like heavy from Team Fortress now. Yeah. But <laughs> um, I honestly, heavy like, it's weapons. off, but he's just like holding it, like yeah. getting a good feel for it. <clears throat> Remember, after you've used that for uh you know, a nice long combat. Oh, you press that thing against the chest of a Solarian and watch them boil. <laughs> and he kind of chuckles. It's like, huh, gonna use this not too long ago. Ran into some humans. Eh, they're not bad fighters. Good hunters, too. All right. Well, enough happy talk. Uh, I've got work to get done. We just got back to the Citadel. I've got some repairs gotta get done on this ship the captain here he's uh kind of an ass but he knows what he's doing he nods and just takes another look around the armory breathes in on you know stows the weapon as best he can <laughs> um <laughs> and says his farewell um yep uh you say uh, your farewell and everything um and as you go to leave uh, he like well, you grab your weapons as they're like you know because they're now done being cleaned or whatever. Yep. Uh, you grab your weapons and you you store them and you're walking out. And as he's walking out with you, uh, one of the other Krogan in the area is like, "Hey, ain't you cracks?" And he just looks at the guy and says, "Who wants to know?" Um. Uh, sorry, I actually did not think of a name for a second there. That was bad, Steve. <laughs> Uh, Vitae. <laughs> Name doesn't ring any bell. Crax is just standing there like, uh, okay. 
your uncle says that you travel with a Solarian. That that a Solarian is pulling your collar. <laughs> and he headbutts him. Yeah! <laughs> roll me your attack roll. I was about to say, this whole conversation has been very un <laughs> like despite all the guns they were surrounded by. Uh, well, this was between family. Well, so... yeah. Well, it's not just between family. It was also he was talking to a Krogan that's centuries old. So Krogan that's centuries old have a better understanding of galactic politics. But he was also respectful. That's just... He's earned a right to be an asshole, and he isn't. Ro roll your damage. Oh, I should actually have a plus two on that as well. Woo! Woo! So you gotta grab him. And you're just like, boom! And he just like lay him flat. Uh, on the ground, he just, like stumbles backwards and then kind of like trips up over his feet as he's trying to scramble to get them behind him. And he lies flat on the ground. Your uncle like lets out a loud ra laughing roar, and a few of the other Krogan there do too. Loud ra laughing roar and all that stuff. And he's like, You know what they say keep your friends close. <laughs> and he gives you like a hard slap on the shoulder. You know, one of those like cracks wasn't like 85 strength. He might actually yeah. move a little from it, but Cracks is very well formed. And um, he gives you a hard slap on the shoulder with his little T-Rex arms and um, uh, and gives you like a nod, like it's like a silent goodbye, like a hmm, of approval. Yep, and Cracks heads back to the ship. Walks back to the ship <laughs> holding his, holding his gun. I think it's like oh, in stow form, it's just like a giant backpack with a freaking barrel sticking out. Um... So, I mean, Krogan are already tall, but now you have to get through doorways, like, oh, 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 oh. Um, so anyways, you, uh, you make your way to, uh, back, I mean, I imagine immediately back to your ship, and when yeah. you get to your ship, uh, and you're walking on, we'll say the first person to, to see the weapon is Cattle, because he's, you know, usually up in the area or whatever, when he's usually down below working, and, uh, you kind of walk into the airlock like this, like, uh, try to get it into the airlock. And Cattle's kind of like uh, in the other room sipping his coffee or whatever it is his, he's enjoying his Solarian tea. And he kind of like hears grunting and like looks around the corner and sees Cracks uh, walking in with this huge fucking weapon. I was going to offer if anyone was carrying anything heavy. Like, do you need any help carrying it? It's Cracks. He's got a big gun. So, eh. He's in his <laughs> element. It's fine. Um, God, yeah. Cracks probably wouldn't even go through the main hangar the, or the main airlock. He would have to probably just go through the. Uh where Winnie's working on gotcha. the uh, bottom area. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Because it's it's too big for... He's going to break new, the new ceiling-mounted gun if he does that. Yeah. It's like, hmm, I don't want to break that gun. I like that gun. Awesome. Cool. Why don't we take our final break, and when we come back, we will find out what we can find out. So we'll see everybody uh, shortly. Be right back. Crack's just cradling his new weapon in his <laughs> arms like a baby. 